everyone, and welcome to Pizza for Life. Life. My name is Edward Thomas, and my co-host is Lin Yuan. Hello. Hello, Lin. How are you? I'm very good because I'm in a not sucky marriage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's so many different ways you can interpret that. And we're not going to go there today. <laughs> What's wrong with you? We talk to people who might not be married, dude. Exactly, all the time. Okay, today uh, we're going to we're going to talk about things. Um, things. Uh, we're going to talk about marriage. We're actually going to talk about being in a really really crappy bad marriage. Um or not. <laughs> Hopefully you're not and you're not going to be, yeah. but um it's likely that people will be because there are a lot of cases of bad marriage. Yeah, there's a lot of bad marriages out there, and the risk is that if you are if you're not really prepared for marriage, it's gonna suck. That risk is high. Marriage is really like like if you're out there and you're listening to this podcast and you're like, oh, I'm so in love, we're so in love, everything's just so wonderful. <sighs> that doesn't mean you're prepared for marriage. Being happy doesn't prepare you for marriage. It's a good sign, but but really, <laughs> like 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 marriage is so hard and it requires so much work. There is no there is no 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 easy glide way to the to happy marriage, and 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 if you don't, if you're not prepared, if you don't do these kind of things, you will end up. And especially if you don't believe in divorce. So some people get married and they don't believe in divorce, which means that if you end up in a sucky marriage, you end up with years of lifetime sucky, sucking. like every day sucks. <laughs> like lifetime every day suffering. I mean, in, in a bad marriage, it's worse off than being single and unhappy. True. People so. might not might not think that who no. are single and unhappy, but I tell you, if you think your grass is not green enough, the other one is brown. It's yeah. burning. Yeah, like you, <laughs> and people look at because what we mostly see about married couples, you only see the outside, the good. You only see what they want to project. The facade. And what happens is you have no idea how many wonderful couples. So we there's a, a two friends of mine. They were married, and all of us thought this is like such a great couple. I mean, they had a great story. They had a great <laughs> story about how they came to faith in Jesus. They had a great story about everything in their life. And then one day they got a divorce. Out of nowhere. From like everyone. People have never were, seen them fighting. Never. Never had a conflict. No, never. <laughs> and I, I remember people who knew them were crying. Why? Because they thought that this was an example for them to follow. They, they thought. Like Angelina like, Jolie and Brad Pitt? Yeah. And then just they like got that. divorced? Or like, or like Kim Kardashian. <laughs> and Kanye, <laughs> who changed his name to Ye. <laughs> No, has he? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Oh my gosh. I'm Moving rolling on. my eyes because I just <laughs> Kanye, you you really need to seek me out. <laughs> Listen to our podcast. Get in contact with me. I can help you, brother, because you, you need some help. <laughs> All right, I just put that out there in the world, you know. Um, but but this couple, so when they got when they got divorced, I mean it really shook a lot of people up because because it seemed like okay. There was like people were thinking, okay, there's hope. Marriages people, can be great. They can be fun. They can be fulfilling. These things really do happen even in our time. And Not. Then, <laughs> and then they just fell apart. Yeah. And so on. But what is, bad, what is worse, a crappy marriage or divorce, if people believe in divorce? Oh, wow. I don't know. A crappy divorce is really bad, too. So what happens is, okay, so a bad marriage <laughs> makes you want to die. Mm. And a bad divorce... Makes you want to die. <laughs> it's all these things that make you want to die. Now, I, I think like it's it's very seldom that people will end divorce and end it in such a way so they're actually thinking about okay, what's best like if they have kids, mm -hmm. what's best for the kids, or if they think like, well, you know, I mean, we're just not that compatible. We've grown away from each other. We, we don't want to be married anymore. anymore. So let's end this marriage in such a way so it's it's good for both partners. Hardly ever happens. Someone. Because usually what happens is that it's very seldom that both people want to end the in the marriage. Do you say it's seldom? Seldom, mm -hmm. very seldom. It's one always part a, wants to work, and the one other person one said no. What happens is that one person's probably already thought about it for a long time, and, and never they told to, the other, and mentally prepare themselves, mm -hmm. and then they drop the bomb on the other person who has no preparation time, no, 
But the other person who's been thinking about it, preparing themselves mentally for it, expects the person who just received this shattering, you know, earth shattering news to catch up to speed with them. And that doesn't happen. No. Uh, one of the problems that divorce often leads people to be come selfish. All of a sudden, it's like, it's how I feel. It's about me and what I can get. And, dun, dun, dun. and all of a sudden, that reveals that that selfish, selfishness was always a part of the marriage. Mm. It's just that divorce allows it to come up to the surface and be seen. And so it's it's really uh, it's it's really bad. And the reason we're saying this is not because we're wanting to tell people go out and get divorced, or whatever, or like that. We're saying that because we really are concerned about people who are entering into marriage totally unprepared and don't understand just just the sheer amount of work that a good marriage takes. So, yes. So, what, what work does it <laughs> take? I mean, how long have you been married? I've been married 30 years, just about. Oh, wow. I've I only know. been married for eight years almost. Oh, you're just a newbie. Yeah, I you're know. A baby. But compared to my peers, I'm a well, veteran. Yeah, well, that's because, you know, <laughs> they get married today, divorce tomorrow. You know. No. Yeah. No, no, Most no. people of my age don't get married. No, they just move in together. Yeah. Yeah. And then Stupid. they have a bunch of kids. And then yeah. maybe, maybe they get married. Or maybe not. No. No. There's no big push. There's no, like, especially here, I think in Sweden, there's no, there's no negative anything connotation from society about not being married. So no. people are like, well, you know, why should we do that? You know, we're good where we're at. I guess so. And people feel like, oh, it's just like a, a cost to have right. a, a wedding and then go to planning. It's, it does cost. It's like, <laughs> it doesn't have to be. No. You could you could go to the civil s- s- um, office, sign a paper, but you can have ma- two witnesses, finish. Yeah, but you get married in the Church of Sweden. It doesn't cost anything. Huh? If if one of you is a member of the Church of Sweden, you got this no, big but, gigantic church. Yeah, but they are thinking about the wedding party and it has to be perfect. But you don't have to do that. Yeah, but people think that. But see, that's the whole thing. They've already, like, people have already got sucked in. Like, you already know that people are not dealing with reality when they think that, <laughs> dealing with reality. that okay, like it's, not, like, it's not enough for them to just celebrate with their family and friends, no. their promises they're making to each other, uh, the music and having a really nice wedding ceremony. People think now we've got to go all out and prove something to people by the party. And so you spend all this money. I'm like, listen. <laughs> spend this money on counseling. You can have McDonald's. <laughs> get McDonald's to cater it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't. I mean, that was the thing I like about you guys' wedding is that. <laughs> it was so cheap. <laughs> it was, that's because of you and us. No, okay. no but, but we you guys. Students. But you students. Yeah, I mean, no, but you guys, you guys didn't go over the top. No. And it was still nice. And people have fun. I mean, I had a good time. <laughs> I would really enjoy myself. It's one of the better weddings I went to. So. Oh wow! What a compliment. I know, and I go to a lot of fancy ones. Yeah, I know. I know. I had one on an island that was amazing. Oh wow! Castles. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. We should change jobs. Yeah. Just study. maybe I should talk about all the <laughs> cool weddings I've had a chance to officiate. Oh. That's when we came in a boat to an island. That was, oh. it was, Did that marriage hold? I have no idea. There was all those people after them. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes people just want me to. They like they exotic. No, they like. <laughs> <laughs> this is not really on topic, but I drive a motorcycle, and when I was a, when I was a young priest, I had dreads. Oh, they and so people cool. said first, there's no other black priest in like all of Sweden. We're like five, <laughs> maybe five. Maybe, I think we we're three back then. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had dreads, and I drove a motorcycle. So people oh, were like, "Horrible!" People were like, "Oh my gosh, you're so cool! I want the cool priest on the Hardy Davidson who's got dreads." Oh, I, I'm serious. Yeah, I know. People oh. were like, "I mean, back then, people, I mean, woo! They just wanted to come and be in my in the, in the be in my glance." <laughs> wow, I know. You're so like, cool. I was so cool back then. You know, before I cut my hair off, and <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna, that's why I got all this stuff growing up on top again. <laughs> I'm thinking about braiding it, um, but anyway. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, and so and so people like that. Oh, you know. <laughs> oh, we have a priest, and he and he has an American accent, and he drives a motorcycle because no one else has that. So it's that cool factor. I've got something that you don't have. Ha, 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 ha. Is that a factor for bad marriage? If you only That's focus just on thing. that. Just, <laughs> but but I mean, think like this: like how many people you're going to spend 50 years together with someone? Maybe. But all your energy has gone into planning 
the wedding and the party. And, and very little has gone into preparing for the marriage. And that that's just setting you up for failure. I think that the weird thing is that, I mean, when you start a marathon, you don't get the party at the beginning. You get the party <laughs> at the end. No. Which in the you, beginning... Before you start training, <laughs> you're like, let's have a... <laughs> Let's have a let's have a celebration party. <laughs> I mean, before you go to a marathon, you train the heck out, yeah. and then you mentally get prepared for all the suffering yeah. and the like. Exactly. Okay, how can I mentally go through get this marathon and stuff? And when it's going, it, it's hard during the way. Like you push yeah, through. Maybe you have some friend running along and yeah, like cheer you on, cheer give you, you on, water give along you water. the way. And then, well, and then well. when you come to the finish line. <laughs> Then there is the party. <laughs> there is the medals. Not in marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Not at the beginning. <laughs> marriage, it starts off. That's a, and that's a bad thing. <laughs> it starts off already at the best you're ever going to experience. <laughs> yeah. The best you're going to look, and to be, like, whoosh, the money. Goes and you know, down. <laughs> goes down. <laughs> goes down the drain. It's like, wow, look at that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's going to end bad. <laughs> but I mean... um. I we talked about divorce before I yeah. think and uh now I have a case where my daughter's teacher she's getting a divorce I think it's the second time Wow And that doesn't surprise me Yeah because you said I think you said because I said oh the the divorce rate in Sweden is really high Yeah And it looked like every other person gets divorced right. but you said it's not that it's that the same people who get divorced get divorced again Yeah like people get if you got divorced once you get remarried the chance of you getting divorced again is like seventy five percent. Yeah. So the chance is like really high, and then what happens is it's the people who are repetitive divorcees that are driving the divorce <laughs> rate up. So. <laughs> so if you look at people who have been married only one time, mm-hmm. and you look at their the divorce rate among people who've only been married one time, mm. that divorce rate is really low. It's <laughs> way less than than fifty percent compared to the divorce rate of people. You know, when you're adding in then people who have been divorced several times. So, mm-hmm. so. Okay, so how how can you spot people who are uh, ill-prepared for marriage? Oi, they usually have a horn growing out the <laughs> top of their head. And I, when I see the horn, I'm like... <gasps> people oh, to avoid. <laughs> like, please don't stick me with your horn. People no, to avoid. No, uh, it's, it's hard to tell because most people spend so much time um, selling an image of what they want people to see and not really sharing. So... We have this, uh, a culture that doesn't really provide a safe space for people to be who they truly are. Really? Yeah. In this day and age where people this. are like, oh, I'm going to be me and blah, 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 individuality. That's still fake. And That's a, uh, everything. Most of all, the, most of all, that, all that stuff where people are like, I'm just going to be me. I'm going to be the real me, blah, blah, blah. Most of that's fake. How? Because they're still... Doing these things for for what other people think. So what happens if if you're really, so if you really want to be healthy, you really you really want to show who you are, you're always a combination of both good things and bad things. No, which way. means that yeah, I know surprise. <laughs> huh? oh, I think it says like that in the Bible too. Though. <laughs> so, and so what happens is that is that like. Like, you know, like sometimes when we're, I'm talking about things and you know, I'm preaching about things and I'll talk about, but this is an area where I haven't been really successful at. And the reason I do that is not so that people go, oh, well, our poor pastor. Poor pastor. I know. We should feel like, sorry for we him. We should stone him because he shouldn't be a pastor. Yeah, exactly. He's not perfect. And that's what happens, too. <laughs> that's, that's one of the risks I take all the time. I'm like, oh, my gosh. They're waiting for me outside the church. <laughs> They've already started the fire. They're going to burn me at the stake. What? <laughs> but it's... uh. But I think that the reason I do that is because, because that is who I am. Like my mistakes are part of who I am, as well as my success. Them. Exactly. <laughs> and I want to share what I've learned from, from either not having wise counsel, not mm-hmm. taking wise counsel, not knowing any better. Sometimes you just you're doing the best you can, but you're not really as well prepared, you know, as you think you are. And so I, I really want to help people that way. Um, and I'm hoping that by doing that, I'm creating a culture uh, and a climate where other people feel it's okay now to be, take off my mask. I'm less perfect than what I've been letting people on, but this is who I really am. Because I can only love you if you show me who you really are. I can only really help you if you show me who you really are. 
I'm beyond helping though. I know. You know. That's why. You know. You see what I am. What I am. What I am. <laughs> You're not that bad, Liz. <laughs> yes, yes. Run. <laughs> Please, somebody call. I'm please, going to tell whip me him after this podcast. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I'm like, I'm sitting here with Lynn, and uh, please, somebody call. Please, and let them know I'm in danger. <laughs> um, bad marriage. Yeah. What is a bad marriage? What What's the degree? Like, isn't it like a it's gray? Really Grayscale, like what? What do you consider bad? Maybe some people say, Anyone "Oh, he never picks up this. Him. He never picks up his socks after himself. It's such a bad marriage." That's not really a bad marriage. And then someone else would be like, "My husband beats me all the time. That's, That's a, bad a bad marriage. marriage. That's a bad marriage." <laughs> yeah. So. No, but I, I think that a definition of a bad bad marriage is is it's kind of hard to because there's so many different aspects to that. But any time where you feel unsafe, where you feel that you're in a place where um, being you is not okay because either criticism, judgment, something like that. <laughs> Anytime you're in a place where you're forced to not, where you can't be who you are and you're forced to be something else. Um, any place in which you're not just afraid for your life or whatever, both mentally, spiritually, and physically. Those things are signs of a bad marriage. So, I mean, it doesn't always have to be violence. But yeah, violence, is, violence is definitely a bad marriage. Mm. Um, people who are constantly putting you down, um, criticizing you. And I'm not saying people, I'm not, when I say criticizing, I'm not, I don't mean someone saying, oh, hey, I, I really didn't like, I don't like pepper on my eggs. Mm. I don't mean that. I mean people who are like, <laughs> like, oh, you're so stupid. You're never going to be anything without me. You need oh, me to wow. do it. Like, so where people are really... Uh, yeah, it's like a person. personal attack. Yeah, so there's like that mental abuse mm. kind of kind of stuff. There's places where people are actually being tortured in marriage. Yeah. So like, um, if you're married to someone who's really unstable, so say you're say you're a woman and you're married to a man who's super super jealous. So when you come home, he's like, okay, let me see your telephone. And I saw you talking to the mailman outside. Don't mm. you ever do that again? Because you said you're gonna make me really mad and stuff like oh that. My God. So there's people who. Who, as soon as they get done with work, they rush right home and they close the door because they're not allowed to interact with any other person mm. but the person they're married to. That's a bad marriage. Um, a- <laughs> anytime, anytime someone is telling you, so like say you're you're uh, a Christian and you're married to someone who's not a Christian, and they're telling you you can't be a Christian, you cannot pray, you can't go to church, you can't ex- you can't live out the Christian life. That's a bad marriage. It's the mm-hmm. same if you're a Muslim and you're married to someone who's not a Muslim, they do that to you. It's still a bad marriage. Yeah, you know, and so. Um, or you can, or you can't meet your friends. I don't like your friends. You can't meet. You're them. not allowed to have friends. Maybe. Yeah. So there's there's people there's people who live under these, like only and often in a bad marriage, only one person sets the rules, and the other person is expected to follow. Mm. That's always in every case that is a bad marriage, or in a case where um, the person makes you dependent. So there's marriages where someone says, "Oh, you know, we share everything." So one person gives up their job. Mm-hmm. One person gives up. A lot of different things. And now they're dependent upon the other person. And now the person has this, this sense of power and they use their power in order to to it's manipulate and make the person do whatever they want. Yeah. And so and that's also a, a bad marriage. But I think I feel like those things you just said, they feel like they're obvious. They're not. For me it sounds ob- uh, it's, obvious. Right. It's obvious to us on the outside. Yeah, yeah. But but when people are in it, because what happens that's the the negative side of human adjustability is that we can adjust to anything. Yeah, we can adjust to torture. Yeah. And so what happens is that <laughs> is that once you're in that situation, if you don't when you first encounter it, don't react. That's going to that's going to determine what's going to happen. If you don't react, if you don't get away, if you don't draw a line, if you don't stand up for yourself, what happens is that becomes your your daily reality, becomes your habit. You will adjust. It's a new best baseline. Yeah, and you will accept whatever People treating you like crap. Mm. You will accept people uh, belittling you, making you feel stupid, making you question your own insanity or reality. You will you, you will accept start believing the picture. what they're telling yeah, 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 you. Yeah, you'll believe what they tell you, and you live it out. And all of a sudden, this is not a marriage of equals. It becomes this. It's it's one person actually enslaving and ruling yeah. over another person, and that's and those things. Are so, it, and it's so bad because. You may never, you may never come back 
to your full spirit again. And a, a broken spirit may not, you can be stronger, but you may never be as strong as you were before you met that person. And so that's why it's so bad. Isn't it also true that um, it's problematic for the people who can see from the outside oh. because they might tell you, Ooh. but you're so deep into it, you can't get out. Most you can't people, see it. Stockholm you can't. Syndrome. Uh, Oh. So you're like, no, no, he's a good guy. Oh, or, my gosh. No, no, she's not controlling at all. And I see this really a she lot. She just with, cares me. <laughs> with, um, so women who are in an abusive relationship, mm. if if the woman doesn't, and I and I know that some of you guys who are listening, you might think I'm a really bad person. If she does not approach me to ask for help, I cannot help. I don't get involved. I've, I've done it. I can't. I've done it when I was younger. I tried to get involved and get help. Mm. I I mean... What happened was the person, the woman I thought I was trying to help to get out of this bad marriage, to stand her husband, she turned on me. Yeah. I mean, it was like the total Stockholm Syndrome thing. And I was like, I, tried I to thought help you, you and you wanted to help get out of this. You know, you're just trying to drive a wedge between us. I'm like, no, no, no. I just want you to be safe. <laughs> I'm like, I just want you, you know, I want him to stop being you. Because you're jealous because you really wish you had me. No, 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 oh I gosh. really don't. Like, I don't find you attractive at all. So, <laughs> I don't even know why he married you. So, I'm like, you know, but it's, it's, you know, so but it's, I think it's, 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 this it's case one of those that, things. It's this case that if they don't want help, you can't, can't help, help them. them. No. There's no way. No, they just have to, and it's hard. It's hard when you, there's people you really love or respect they have uh, maybe children. Yeah. It's even worse. And you just have to, and you sit there and you, and you watch this and you're just like, why can't you go see it? But I remember mm. myself when I was in an abusive relationship and my friend, my friend told me she, uh, uh, well, this woman was, was pregnant with, um, well, you probably shouldn't say that cause that me out the person. Okay. Take that away. But anyway, this person, <laughs> my friend came, came home one day and said that, uh, you know, uh, you don't have to take this, mm. and and that person just she beat my friend up. Oh wow! And I was like, "What's going on?" Like, like wow, well, that's yeah, my it's, friend. It's not my wife who I have now. I want to say that because I don't want people thinking like Annette was like this. No, 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 no. I Someone was in my twenties. Yeah. It was the first person I was in, involved with, and 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 she was a really bad person. Uh, I guess one day I have to tell that story <laughs> about. I mean, because here I was, and, and partly because of how I was brought up, you know, with an abusive dad, I didn't want to be that kind of person, and I didn't, I didn't know what to do. No. And I, I remember, like, I remember doing things like, people were like, so, so, Ed, how are you, like, my friends noticed something was wrong, mm. and they're like, they're like, uh, so, is everything okay? Yeah, 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 man, everything's fine, because I, I didn't. Because once I was in the relationship and stayed in it, I was so ashamed. To if, admit, that yeah, that I had been stupid. Yeah, and <laughs> so I didn't want to. I couldn't. I couldn't deal with the shame of it. Yet, and so I really didn't want to be in the relationship, and I, I didn't know how to get out of it. Actually, mm. I, I really didn't. And I, I mean, I tried. This is. I like. It's not like a, an abused woman. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I really. I mean, I did try. I, I've tried leaving. And then, uh, and then she would like use things like the kids against me. So she would say, you know, well, uh, so okay, so it was the it was my son's biological mom. Mm. So that I might as well say that because mm. this was like thirty, almost forty years ago. Mm. Uh, but I remember like she was pregnant with with uh, my youngest son Jonathan, and uh, when she was pregnant, she says, she says, if you don't do what I say, I'm gonna go and have an abortion. <gasps> I got to kill the baby. That's really bad. And I don't I don't believe in abortion. I I you know we were we were together. We had planned on having kids. This wasn't like an accident. We had actually mm-hmm. planned. We thought we'd have all the kids in January. That's how young and dumb I was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where was Jonathan born? He was born in January. All, oh my god. And he's born in January. Yeah, yeah. We actually planned it. So we wow, took the temperature dude. and everything. I know we were just I was just young, but um but she told me she said um because she had she had done something really bad, and uh, she came to my uh, to our Fourth of July party that we always had at my grandparents' place, and mm. and, uh, and she called my mom the N word <gasps> in front of everyone. She oh my God. she took the ribs my mom had made and, and the potato salad. Like, ah, this is just such bad food, and she threw it. 
Oh my god. And gosh. then my mom's like, You really shouldn't have done that. You know, that's not really nice. And then she called my mom the effing N word. <gasps> oh my gosh. So much so, shame. So my cousin rode on his motorcycle, came to me, says, You gotta get home. Yeah. He's this like not okay. she's like, She's threatened to burn down the house and you you know. I was like, Okay. So I get to the house and I was like, I, I and that's when my friend um, my friend Kim came over and she's like She's like, I'm sorry, Ed. I just have to say this. You don't have to take all this Anything. crap from this biatch. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, you call me a biatch? She's pregnant. Yeah. She's like seven months pregnant. Yeah. She's like, you call me a biatch? She just jumped over there. Smack, smack, smack. <gasps> oh, my god. I'm like, I'm like, I'm done. You got to like, go. I can't. Like, I just, this doesn't work. So she left the house. She called me 10 minutes later. She's like, I was at the phone booth right now. And I was just thinking, if you don't take me back and let me in, I will kill this baby. Oh. <gasps> Oh my god! You know what I did? You let her back in. I said, "I'm sorry. Please come back." <laughs> no, but you cared so much for your child. I know. I and mean, I just, what I, what else were you supposed to do? I'm like, yeah, go go kill. Yeah, him. go kill the baby. You know? <laughs> See if I care. <laughs> you know, and I couldn't do that. And it was like, and that's and that's like that power. Like she knew how to manipulate mm. me. She, like she knew, you know, like she knew like getting pregnant obviously keeps me bound to her. Mm. You know, and and I'm I want to be a good dad. I, I never wanted to be a bad dad or anything like that. Um, but that relationship also set me up. I mean, I like I should have never had relationships after that one for like years. But I didn't know anything about that back then. <laughs> but that relationship, I mean, I was I was really messed um, up on, on different levels. Mm-hmm. I was. I mean, it was it was just so crazy. It was so sick. I mean, it's just and it was like. Um, and what happened was in that relationship, she was so, like, my best friend, she called my best friend's mom and said, you know, Carol's been in a really bad car accident. <gasps> Nothing happened. I mean, it wasn't true. No, 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 but so, she lied. So, yes, yeah, so my best friend's mom is like, she's like, call me. She's like, Edward. I'm like, I'm like. I'm like what? No, no. We just got through eating lunch, you know. There's yeah. nothing. Happened. But she just like she wanted to chase away all my friends, all family, everything. Mm. And so I lost a lot of like really close friends back then because well. I was so busy trying to defend her. Mm-hmm. And and I wanted to maintain my friends, but I couldn't maintain my friends because my friends were like this too much. They're like this not yeah, okay. She's she's abusing you. Yeah. You know. And I was like, but no, she's not. Sometimes she's really nice. You just don't know. Uh, I mean, listen to how I sound. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and so it's it was it was a really bad time, and I always wondered what was it that happened in my in my life that made me susceptible susceptible to that, prone to this. Yeah, because it's like of relationship. I mean, I was like I was a tennis player. I was in like really great shape. I mean, I could have just punched in the mouth, uh. but <laughs> but but I I didn't like the thought of punching her in the, in the mouth horrified me. Because you didn't want to be like your dad. I didn't want to be like my dad. But I, I didn't know, and I didn't know what to do in that situation. And so it was, it was really, really hard situation. Yeah, it was, she was, it was pregnant really, with your child. Yeah, and uh, but even before she got pregnant, I mean, she was. You shouldn't have planned for more kids after Eddie with that lady. You should have no, taken, but, taken Eddie and then but she just made me go. But she made me. Mm. She says, "If you don't have sex, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take him and leave." I mean, I was. You were really young, though. I was I mean, young. You I was became in, I was a father when you were 22? 22. 22. And this was like my, so. my first like serious relationship as an adult. And I really did love her. I'm going to be honest. I really did. I thought. Wow. And I you thought. Up. I thought that if I just loved her enough. Yeah. That's something people to take home. It's not about you with this kind of people. No, exactly. You can do whatever you want. It's never going to get better. It won't. It won't fix Someone it. crosses that line. Someone hits you. Put you down. Someone is just torturing your life. It you can't do anything to make that person be nice to you, because that's a choice they have to make themselves. It's never you don't you don't make me be nice to you. I have to choose to be nice to you. That is my choice. I own my own behavior, and everyone owns their own behavior. And if that person chooses, if that person's not nice to you, it's because they choose they not want to, to be, be nice like to you. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't love them enough. You can't be nice enough. And everything you give up, when you give, you try to be nice. You try to be loving. Um, you try not to talk to friends. You try not to do anything that's going to trigger, trigger them, them and make yeah. them go off or whatever. You know what? All you do is lose power. You lose self-respect. You lose energy. And you just become their slave. And they're going to step on you. They're going to wipe their feet on you. They're going to make you feel 
like crap and you lose self-worth. so much you lose <laughs> self worth self esteem you lose this this pride in yourself i mean you yeah. lose so much and it takes and i'm serious it takes years to get that back if you ever get it back yeah years so please don't please go in a bad marriage if you do see not go any, in a bad marriage if you see any of like signs of this before you're married don't get married you you should really don't even go urge, don't, urge even, don't even don't even try to, to get just break up leave and find someone no seriously because you're not a psychiatrist no. you're not a psych- you cannot fix someone no if someone is no, broken I was thinking or whatever tell them leave. tell tell your partner you have to go get help you have to fix oh, yeah. this you have to fix this you can say get help but don't don't tie yourself to their help don't say but once you get help then we no 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 <laughs> no see you you leave you separate you get safe and you say you need to get help yes <laughs> you know and and then and then you look for someone who doesn't who have isn't, this issues. who it doesn't have these things going on in their life. There there, there are good there, people. There are no people perfect there. people. No, but there are people that have issues that need to be addressed. There's some bad people out there you don't want to be involved with. Mm-hmm. There's, I mean, there's there's like good decisions and bad decisions. There are wise and unwise decisions. You just want to make a wise decision because being in being in a bad marriage. It's just not it's worth it. It's the worst. It. It's the worst you can do. It you, is. you can to yourself, uh, to your children, to your family, friends, yeah. the world around you, the angels in heaven. You know, <laughs> it's, it's all bad. <laughs> so, mm. for those of you who are single and feel miserable, to be in a bad marriage is the worst. Yeah, it's the worst. So, don't look forward and idolize marriage as something. That's the only thing that will fulfill you because it can go terribly wrong. Yeah. Whatever is bad before you get married, it's going to get worse. worse. That, and, that's, and think about that. Think about the things that, you know, like you see a person has an explosive temper. That's going to get worse. Mm. Like marriage never fixes a problem. Okay. And kids definitely do not fix problems. No. Ooh. If you're pregnant with someone, but that person is really not the right person for you. Don't get married. Be a good parent. Kids. But please do not bind yourself up to that person. It Just is for the never, sake of the child. It's never worth it. You don't help any kid by being stuck with a jerk. Yeah. Okay? I just putting that out there, people. All right. Well, I guess Wisdom Lynn, for you. Wow, this was a really heavy one. So um yeah, if you guys have comments or if you if there's more things you want to know about stuff like this, you know, we're definitely uh here for you and you can please write to us and let us know. And um and if you're in that situation, please get help. Yes. Do not please. stay one day longer in an abuse of bad, horrible marriage. I know some people say, Ed, you're not really Christian. You know, people shouldn't get divorced. Uh, sometimes you got, listen, it's not a sin to get divorced. I'm just going to put that out there. There's, there's no verse in the Bible that says it's a sin. It says God doesn't like it. It says that it's, you know, it's not the best thing maybe for us. It's not what he thought we not, should do. It's not a sin. There is no sacrifice required for getting a divorce. Mm. And if you find the Bible verse that says it's a sin, please send, send it. it to me because <laughs> you're lying, okay? <laughs> it doesn't exist. I already tried. I looked everywhere. It, it doesn't exist, okay? All right, everyone. Well, <laughs> Lynn, mm? oh, thank you very much. This I was, just listened to you, dude. I know. This was a hard <laughs> one. I think I just I just dominated. I, you have to talk more. Well, I don't live in such a crappy marriage. I know. So I hope it won't turn that way either. Do I. Mm. Not, I, I mean, I'm, I'm glad I don't have that, that kind of marriage in my life now because mm-hmm. it's really, it is. It's a hard marriage, yeah. but maybe not abusive. No, no. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a whole cross-cultural thing. <laughs> How many times are you going to say that? Cross-cultural marriages are really take a lot of work. They're really hard. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just you just, just you're always saying crazy things and doing crazy things, you know. If she was just American, okay. <laughs> okay. If everybody oh, was American, oh, you were Swedish then. Mm. No, nah, I can't imagine me being Swedish. No. After living here 25 years, I don't think I can be Swedish, but I can be American, <laughs> and so can she. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone. Take care, everyone. Um, and and please, if you're if you know anyone like this, whatever, pray for them. Um, try to help them to get help. Okay. Yeah. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. If you have any comments or ideas, please send us a message to fika for life at mail dot com. Fika F I K A. This was the Fika for Life podcast with Lin Nguyen and Edward Thomas. 
and we hope to hear you again.